ตรงนี้กะต่อยคอหลุดเลยครับคุกขวาซ้ายตามขวาตามโอ้โหอัพคัตตัวลูกนี้แล้วชานชัยนิ่งเลยครับโอ้โหโอ้โหสำลังศักไม่ปล่อยโอกาสแล้วครับสอยแล้วเดินสาวแล้วเหลือเวลาอีกหนึ่งนาทีชานชัยพยายามถอยงนเงยแล้วครับโอ้โหโดนอีกแล้วโอ้โหสองหมัดซ้อนซ้อนอัพคัตขวา Turns pretty hard, but what's beautiful is that his knee, his hip, and his shoulder are all one piece that carry the power of his arm. So there's a lot of power in his hook, but it's the entire side, his entire left side moves as one piece. Oh. It even has a little bit of a downward uh, angle to it. <laughs> I've been told by a lot of people that my hook is too close. <laughs> you hook yourself. So he wanted me to make the arm a single piece and not move it towards myself. I liked his uppercut a lot. He paid a lot of attention to how it's driven through the hip, like it comes from the leg. Yoknanoi means like uh, rock forward a little bit on the uppercut. See how he has a sharpness to it? It's like pop to its target. He doesn't really go through the target because he's snapping back. Oh, that would hurt though. So he's different from um, Sagat in that Sagat's got that like tiger uppercut, which is really really long. If you watch his session in the Muay Thai library, there are a few of them, and he works with me on the tiger uppercut, which is really long. Saman Sak is one of the first trainers who has told me not to reach so far with the uppercut, which for me, I'm short. Actually felt really good. Like I could feel where exactly his range was coming under the chin of someone when you're standing in front of them. I could feel how that was being driven up through the knee and the hip. That one felt a little snappy. I like that. He's saying everything comes from the hips. He's like you need to move your torso. This is something that. Is true for every trainer. <laughs> they all they all understand how it comes from the hips. But people who really talk about this a lot are Cha Chai Sasakun, whose gym we're in right now. He's in the Muay Thai Library, as well as General Tan Wakom, who is the master of Muay Lert Rit and the Muay Karat style. He talks a lot about how everything comes from this twist of the body. So if you want to focus on that element, which is what Samran Sak's talking about there, those are two good sessions to review as well. But you can't have tension in your arm, or it's going to be slow. <laughs> He's saying if you try to punch 100%, you're never going to hit anything. So you kind of have to have a relaxed, kind of like 70% power, and then that's enough power to knock someone out. But you don't want to have the tension of trying to go 100% because that's what's going to slow down your punches and actually make them really readable. <laughs> Look at the looseness in the various parts of his body when he does this shadow. You can see the looseness in his shoulders, but the complete accuracy on the ends of his punches, like he's hitting the same spot over and over again. This is funny because I'm standing far away from him, but I'm still not even extending my arms entirely to reach him, which means that I'm like stuffing my own punches. He actually stands close and gets full extension on all of his punches like that, which ends up going through the target. Oh, so powerful. Look at how long that jab is. And look at his feet. See how he doesn't turn his front foot at all, but he's got a little bit of a pivot on the back foot. So he keeps he keeps telling me you don't have to go 100%. He can feel that I'm like using power or I'm like trying to hit really hard. As the pad man, you should never be feeling how hard someone's trying to punch. You should just feel how hard it is, which comes out of the relaxation. So he's going to say this a lot to me because I was pretty tense. 
You can even see the relaxation in his shoulders right now as he's holding the pads. It's like designation of tension rather than an overall tension. This is true for every element with Muay Thai. Oh, look at that uppercut. See how he like digs it? And look at his back foot, how like the back foot drives power. So he's like, you take a step forward and then the backhand uppercut follows. So he's, he's showing me how the guard of the front hand comes up at the same time as the uppercut. You don't step in with your hand like super guarded by your face because that's a tension that you don't need, but it comes into position at the same time that that uppercut is coming into position. It's like what the offhand does on a kick. Oh. See how it was kind of loose up until that moment? It was relaxed. <laughs> That's a little wonky. And he's got this like, you turn your uh, fingers in towards yourself. It's like you're looking at your nails um, at the last second as the uppercut's coming. He's asking me when I'm going back to Patio. <laughs> it's tough to ask. It's possible he was thinking about <laughs> showing me another thing, another day or something. Revelatory to me. Sometimes you'll realize something in something you've been doing for a really long time that just never made sense to you. This happened with Crew Manop. If you go back and watch his first session in the Muay Thai library, he teaches me that when you come off of a kick, put the heel of your standing foot down first and then the kicking foot comes and your balance is totally on. If you do it in the opposite order, you have no balance. What Saman Sok just showed me should be really obvious and to some people is really obvious and some people just do it automatically without realizing it. But when you're throwing your cross, you have to step with your front foot first, which you would be doing if you were throwing a jab anyway. But if you're only throwing your back arm, I don't step and then have the cross come. It's just like, slight delay in the movement, putting things in proper order, that brings all the pieces together in proper form and timing. So for me, if you're like me and you don't realize this consciously, stepping and then throwing the cross as like a one-two makes a big difference. <laughs>